Patrick Dean of the Dean Paint Company dumped hundreds of containers of toxic waste into the Hudson River. You've heard what? I'm dumping paint? That's, that's bull. Who said that? What the f is going on? Would you stop it? that? What the f Mr. Daniels, are you willing to swear in a court of law that Patrick Dean deliberately dumped toxic waste into the Hudson River? Show me the Bible. And how do you know this? I was the one that drove the truck that dumped them myself. But Mr. Dean supervised. Every drop. And you're obviously willing to risk losing your job to expose the truth. Children are gonna die. As it happens, this is James Phillips. So, Mr. Dean, why'd you come to me? Because I didn't do it. Mr. Hammer, I heard that you help people. I need help. I'm listening. I want you to find Stephen Daniels. I want to know why he lied about me on that show, why they went to so much trouble. Why didn't you go to James Phillips? It's his show. <laughs> I, I tried, Phillips. They have. They got security around that station like he's Sinatra. All right. Supposing I find this guy, Stephen Daniels, what then? Not one word of that crap was true, but it ruined me. Patrick Dean was another victim of the 90s thirst to try a man on television. TV was his courtroom. Anchorman James Phillips, the prosecutor. I've never been a fan of the tabloids. I don't like them at the grocery store, and I hate them on my TV. So I went to see James Phillips, the hairsprayed inquisitor who gave Stephen Daniels a platform to slander my client. But by the time I got there, Phillips had become a tabloid headline himself. My pal, Captain Skip Gleason, was away fishing, and I was stuck with Detective Jackson, who was fishing for a husband. Don't contaminate my crime scene. Don't worry, Jackson. I'm very tidy around murder. Hmm. You think this was a robbery? I'm asking the questions, Hammer. Now, what the hell are you doing here? I was lonely. What, are you working vice or just moonlighting? <laughs> I am in no mood for your so-called wit. So why the look? There I am, out on a great date, hand in hand in a record store, looking for my favorite jazz. What's that? Bird on a roost. Oh. Then I get paged. Top TV newsman murdered, no witnesses, end of date. Now, I want some answers. So do I, sweetheart. Come on, Hammer, this is an active murder investigation. I'm following up for a client. Who? Patrick Dean, he says your corpse did a hatchet job on him. Hey, Hammerhead, you think your client enough motive to put a bullet into James Phillips? Who didn't? Yeah, victim's been dead about eight hours. Mm -hmm. Friends looks like a bullet hole out of the wall. Looks like a nine millimeter. About the size of your brain, Moretti. We're not finished talking yet. I am. Look, all we want is some information. Is that asking too much? Look, lady, you want answers? I don't got any answers. The place is crazy here tonight. I got cops working all hours to try to get to the bottom of this thing. Excuse me. Hey, buddy, there's no smoke in here. Put that butt out. Sorry, officer. The last thing I want to do is break the law. Are you the officer in charge here? I could be. Jeez, can anybody give a straight answer Listen, around my here? My name is Mike Hammer. I'm a private investigator. What's going on? I just thought somebody might be able to help me, that's all. Well, who are you? I'm Beth Reynolds. I was James Phillips' producer on NYC, and he was a very good friend of mine. Oh, I'm sorry about what happened. I'm sorry about your loss. Thank you. Listen. Well, it was nice to uh, meet you, Mr. Hammer. Listen, uh, you want to uh, share a cab? 
You know what I'd really like is uh, it's a drink. Just so happens I know a great bar. Come on. The lady in red had information, and the package was appealing. So it was worth the price of a drink at Lou's to see where it would go. Who knows? I might even be forced to frisk her. How long were you and Phillips together? Oh, I've been working, worked, I guess, with James for uh, nine, ten years. I'm impressed. It's a pretty long stretch, isn't it? Let's just say we don't have employee of the month. We have employee for a month. <laughs> oh, Chardonnay, please. Uh, the usual, bud. So, the police drop any hints? Nothing. And that's what's so frustrating. No arrest, not even a lead. I'm ready to blow somebody's brains out. How do you know they don't have a lead? Well, if they do, they're sure keeping it from me. Oh, but they feel free to ask me all kinds of questions without answering one of mine. And I'll bet you're not used to that. <laughs> there are no ratings in silence. Anyway, patience was never one of my virtues. Me neither. I don't have time for patience, and please, call me Mike. <laughs> I've always found vice more interesting than virtue, Mike. Salute. Cheers. Who's the lucky guy? Oh, belonged to my grandmother. I'm, uh, I'm married to my work. So who do you think did it? Well, we don't expose many saints on NYC, but, uh, Oh, you're the P.I., you tell me. What about Mrs. Phillips? Mrs. Phillips? <laughs> they wrote books on marital bliss watching those two. No, not her, Mike, never. Well, it could be a mob hit. I remember the piece you guys did on that Jersey family last year. You brought them down pretty hard. Or that uh, deputy DA you nailed on sexual harassment. Hmm. So, you are a fan. Yeah, I watch your show from time to time when the Knicks aren't getting killed. <laughs> Point is, it could be anybody. Including Patrick Dean, your client. What makes you think he's my client? I heard you tell the police. Look, he dumped toxic waste into the public water supply. We exposed him on television. He killed James. Yeah, well, Dean says you lied. Well, of course he would. He's also the only one who sent a death threat. You can keep that. Police have the original. Mike, I thought we might maybe partner up on this. My network has very deep pockets. They could make it worth your while. Plus, I'd really like to, to nail this low life. So would I. But I work alone. You, uh, you do everything alone? Not everything. My client's poison pen ruined an interesting evening. A pretty face with bedroom eyes, very tempting. But I knew I had to face my tightly wound client, Patrick Dean, who was looking more guilty the deeper I looked. Good morning, Tom. Don't jump to any conclusions. Patrick Dean's in your office with Nick. Did the police grill him yet? He was at the precinct before dawn, and apparently, Mr. Dean is not a morning person. Hmm. He's not alone. What the hell's going on? Mr. Dean's upset with today's headline. Hey, you know, I couldn't be happier about the damn headline. I'm upset because the police think that I did it. I despise that hairsprayed windbag, but I didn't kill him. So why don't you chill, dude? Just let Mr. Hammer fill you in. Did you write this? James Phillips destroyed my life with his lies. Where were you last night at 8 o'clock? I was with you. Wrong, pal. You were here at 8.30. Now, any good cabbie in this city can get from Phillips' apartment to my office in just 10 minutes. That gives you plenty of time to whack the guy and get over here to try to establish an alibi. Now, where were you before that? My apartment. Alone? I'm not exactly in a party mood. Then I came to see you. Yeah, well, it's pretty coincidental that the same night you turn up here, the guy that's trying to destroy you turns up dead. The last thing I want is James Phillips dead. He's the only one who can prove Daniel's lied. Are you with me or not? I'm with you. Barely. But let me tell you something. 
If you're yanking my chain, I yank back a lot harder. Let's go, Mr. Dean. But that's it? Yeah, that's it. So we talk. Jeez. How do you want to play this? You think he's guilty? Yeah. Do we find someone guiltier? All right, I want to turn up the heat on Mindy Cassidy, Daniel's main squeeze. Let's pay her a visit. I wanted to surprise Mindy, but I was in for the surprise. Well, I shake her loose upstairs, you make your way downstairs, OK? OK. Ah! You stay away from Daniels, or else you won't have any fingers left to hitchhike. You understand me? I'll make a note. <laughs> you guys get the message, huh? That's good. Next time, take your own message. I'm all right. I just fell on my keys. Going to Mindy Cassidy's apartment turned out to be an adventure filled with more surprises. Mike. Miss Reynolds. Miss Reynolds. Last night it was Beth. What's changed? Nothing's changed, Beth. What are you doing here? Same as you. I'm looking for Stephen Daniels. How come? I told you. My network's very anxious to find James's killer. Hmm. Did uh, Daniel's girlfriend tell you anything? <laughs> what, we partners now? You didn't answer my question. No, she didn't tell me anything. But maybe she'll fall for your limitless charm. Well, I certainly hope so. If she does, you'll be the first to get a ring. <laughs> a new question. What's a high-class dame doing in the low-rent district? I hope Mindy would have the answer. Who is it? Mike Hammer. I'm a private investigator. I got some questions for you. Who do you want? Stephen Daniels. I, uh, I'd like to talk to him. Is he around? No. Maybe you can tell me where I can find him. Try Paris. France or Texas? Look, sweetheart, I have got to talk to Stephen Daniels. Now, where is he? I'm not going to tell you anything. All right, all right. I won't bother you anymore. But I strongly suggest if he gets in touch with you, or you change your mind, you give me a call. This is my number. Mr. Hammond, let me explain something to you. I'm not going to be calling you. And Stephen isn't coming back until he knows Patrick Dean can't hurt him. Why? Did Dean threaten him? He swore he'd kill him after Stephen did that TV show. We figured he'd send out a creep like you. Get lost. Listen, Dollface, you get in touch with Stephen Daniels, you tell him. No, you warn him. The longer it takes for me to find him, the shorter my fuse is going to get. Capiche? You get the hell out of here. Capiche? I'm gone. By the way, nice digs. While I was upstairs trying to tap Mindy Cassidy for the whereabouts of her elusive boyfriend, Stephen Daniels, Nick was in the basement doing a little tapping of his own. You got anything? She's talking to Daniels right now. Did you tell him anything? So where the hell's he calling from? Area code 516, Long Island. Beats the Bronx, let's go. We took the 59th Street Bridge to beat the five buck toll at the tunnel. Five sticking bucks to pass through a hole in the ground. New York is the only city in the world with a cover charge. Mindy had warned Daniels I was after him, and I found him at an oil and lube shop ready to slip out of town. Or plan B, I say I'm from the phone company, I gotta see the lines. Or plan C, I say my car broke down, I gotta use his phone. How do you wanna play this? Watch this. Closed. No oil changes today. Come back tomorrow. Daniels, it's my camera. I'm a private investigator. We got some questions for you. Wait a minute. That's your plan? Plan D. I'm 
sorry. Are you all right? That's a 15-yard penalty. No instant replay needed. <laughs> don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Just relax. Take it easy. I'm a private investigator. I'm not a cop. I just want to ask you some questions. I know who you are. I was told you'd show up. Really? By who? I'm not saying another word. Oh, yeah? <clears throat> All right. I'm going to count to one. There's not going to be a two. I want to know why you lied about Patrick Dean. Dean swore he'd kill me. He swore. <laughs> This guy looks like he's down a quart. All my troubles got me was a license plate number and another corpse. It was time for a friendly chat with my laid back client. No, we don't want the New York Times. So where is it? Sit down, Dean. Sit down. What did I do? Poison the Atlantic Ocean? Where were you at one o'clock this afternoon? I could ask you the same question. Answer me, damn it. I got the call from your secretary. She said to meet you at 1 o'clock at Grand Central. She said you had Daniels. Belda. Yeah, Mike? Did you call him and tell him to meet me earlier? Nope. Why are you lying to me? I got the call. She said her name was Belda. You don't have Daniels. And to make it a perfect day, somebody stole my car. Did you report that to the police? No, I said a prayer to St. Jude. Of course I reported it to the police. Why? Because Stephen Daniels was murdered three hours ago. Bought it earlier today. We almost went with him. This, this isn't happening. This is some bad dream. Yeah, well, here's your wake up call, pal. The killer was driving your car. It says here you're an expert marksman. You've been a member of the New York Gun Club 15 years. What is it with you people? You have no right! Don't raise ah. your voice to the lady, huh? Ah. You got a problem with her, you talk to me. You're hurting me. Huh? I'll make a note. I can tell you this, if you're lying to me, I'm gonna put a world hurt on you. Right now, your credibility is zilt, and I want the truth. It wasn't me. I'm no killer, I just make paint. Do you have an appointment? Mr. Dean, you are under arrest for the murders of James Phillips and Stephen Daniels. You have the right to remain silent. If you oh give up that God. right, anything you say... You set me up! Better you than me, pal. But I'm innocent! I am innocent! Oh, yeah? We found the gun that killed Dan as an incinerator of your building. Get him out of here. You have the right to an attorney. I, I trusted you, Hannah! I trusted you in my life! You understand your right, Mr. Dean? Hey, he sounded scared, not guilty. Someone's setting him up. They're doing a hell of a job. That's why I wanted my eyes. Keep him safe and let him cool off. Now we can concentrate on finding the real killer. With Patrick Dean in police custody, I could finally catch my breath. Relax. And leave everything outside the door. Are you all right, Mr. Hammer? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, my sorry to interrupt. Are you going to join us? No, thanks. What about some breathing in and breathing out? Well, maybe later. Namaste, Mr. Hammer. Uh, no, must go. Anchorman James Phillips was dead. He had met his final deadline. Stephen Daniels had joined him. Now my client, Patrick Dean, was on the market for an alibi and a lawyer. The clock was ticking, so I made a call. How much longer do you think we're gonna wait here? What's the matter, sweetheart? You got another date? He does not say one word until my mouthpiece gets here. Then lock him up. 
Hey, 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 hey! You go with my client. You are my client, right? This is his lawyer? He is. Frankie Laxler, meet Patrick Dean. <laughs> I'm Detective Jackson, and you're late. Pleasure. You must be the man who's facing the chair. Excuse me, the needle. <laughs> ah, who's this? Ah, I could call my bookie back later. By my bookie, I mean a client who is a bookie. This is the best you get for me? So, you're in trouble with the sharks. I mean the cops, I'm in trouble with the sharks. This is important. I have been arrested for murder, and I didn't do it! We have your client's prints on the murder weapon and in the car. No kidding, it's his car and his gun. What else you got? We will deal with that in court. So, Detective, you're saying that as far as James Phillips' homicide is concerned, you've checked out every single individual who tried to whack this guy. You still here, Hammer? Yeah, Moretti, I love your company. Make your point. My point is, Detective, you have nothing but circumstantial garbage. So turn this thing on. Name? My name is Patrick Dean. I... Let me give you some Lexler's rules. You answer only what they ask you, you speak clearly, and you never lie. You do that, and we'll sail through this together. Okay? So what do you think, Frankie? Give it to me straight. My gut tells me this guy is clean. I can guarantee you one thing. We don't have a chance. I admire your optimism. Please tell me Dean's got the cash to make bail. Look, I told you, the guy is broke. Uh, well, when are you going to bring me a client with a, with, a, with a mattress full of cash? When you win this case. Why aren't you returning my calls? Oh, I'm going to fire my secretary for not giving me the message. What's going on, Mike? Oh, you're talking to him. I'm sorry. What are you doing here? I heard they finally arrested Patrick for James' murder. Want to see if I can get your press pass for the gas chamber? Uh, wait, let me get this straight. You think he's innocent? That he was set up? By who? With somebody that bought a bad batch of blue paint? No, no, we nailed his private parts to the wall and he wanted revenge. It's that simple. It's bad enough that the man dumps toxic waste into rivers for money, but then he goes out and kills my dear friend. You're pathetic, Hammer. You sure have a way with women, Hammer. Experience, Frankie. Years of experience. I needed answers, and I needed them fast. So I turned to my staff, Velda and Nick, two people I can trust. Velda, where the hell are all my pens? Somebody's been cleaning out our office supplies. I know what your next case can be, Mike. I just bought these Tuesday. Uh-huh. Better frisk him before he goes home. You know, there is a piece of this puzzle that just does not fit. Look, you make things too hard, Mike. I mean, Dean swore he'd kill them both. Maybe he did. He's got no alibi. What about Philip's wife? Yeah, I mean, she gets all the money. No, no, this is not about money. Look, Mike, I hate to say this, but um, I think Dean's taking you for a ride. Am I uh, interrupting something? You two can call it a day. Good night, Mike. It might be a little late tomorrow. Cable man's coming at 8.30. Well, I got my beeper if you need me, Mike. Who'd you steal that from? So? I came to apologize. I shouldn't have blown up at you that way. I, I was upset. I had I'd just come from James's funeral. I'm sorry. Apology accepted. 
Are you hungry? I'm starving. Let's get something to eat. So how did you become the big thing at NYC? Well, I'm 23 years old, just out of Columbia Journalism School, and I land an internship with James Phillips. <laughs> Before I know it, one producer falls off the wagon, uh, gets fired, another producer gets fired for, you know, the usual reasons, and I find myself in the back of a limo with Jimmy, blindfolded, on the way to meet the head of a drug cartel. <laughs> Next thing you know, they run the story, I win my first Emmy, and we're a team. Wow, lucky break. So what you're saying is, is Phillips is a pretty good guy? The best. Uh, he may have done one or two unethical things along the way for a story, but <laughs> what journalist hasn't? Like lying about Patrick Dean? That wasn't one of them. And I'll bet you've been a rule or two along the way. Mm, on occasion. <laughs> You know, Mike, you scratch the surface, and you and I are pretty much the same. We're both searching for the truth. How's the fish? Cold. And the wine? Empty. But I have Chardonnay at my place. Is this a business dinner, or...? A dinner, dinner. Dinner is over. But dessert was about to be served, and I knew I'd work off the calories. Make yourself comfortable. I'll get us some drinks. Nice joint. Thanks. What's this? Oh. That's my editing system. Some stories are uh, too hard to cut at the studio. Hmm. I always wondered who cut the good parts out of hotel porn. I'm having wine. How about a beer? I think I'd like something stiffer. Oh, uh, Maker's Mark, okay? Fine. Oh, producer, writer, editor, videographer. No wonder you make the big bucks. I cut all of Jim's segments. We were always on the same page. You're a very impressive woman, Beth. You're pretty impressive yourself. Well, this is your script. What do we do next? We fade to black. Beth Reynolds might be hiding something, but she didn't keep too much from me. So it's really true. All men try to sneak out without saying goodbye. I'm not sneaking out. I just thought maybe you'd like to get some rest. Mm, I thought what we did last night was uh, pretty relaxing. Well, you certainly didn't get your full eight hours. <laughs> so is Hammer your real name, or? Something some ex-girlfriend used to call you. <laughs> Beth's award-winning performance got me thinking about that editing machine. It spliced more than news segments. It cut together the big picture and sent me back to the scene of the crime and to the widow of James Phillips, the man who once rubbed elbows with presidents. Jim was a consummate professional. Yeah. Was he the... Consummate husband? You're a very direct man. This isn't my favorite part of the job, Miss Phelps, but I've got to ask. Was there another woman in his life? I believe this is where I'm supposed to say no comment. You're aware of the fact that I represent Mr. Dean, are you not? Beth mentioned that. Oh, yes, of course. And I presume that you and Miss Reynolds are very close after all the years she spent with your husband. Presumptions are often misleading. Right now, presumptions are all I have to go on. Miss Phillips, I want to find whoever killed your husband, but I need your help. I'll 
I'll do whatever I can. Suppose... Suppose your husband was working on a very sensitive piece of material, a news story. Uh, would he take extra precautions? What do you mean? Well, say he had a piece of information, some evidence, uh, a taped interview that could ruin somebody's life. Wouldn't he keep it someplace special, someplace safe? He wouldn't keep it in his office now, would he? That uh, uh, there is no possibility, Stephen. But I'm not sure. I can't be sure. <laughs> Listen to me, Stephen. These new shows are not about maybes or might-haves or possibilities. This segment is about how your boss dumped hundreds of barrels of toxic waste into a river. But there weren't more than ten, Beth. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I say hundreds? Excuse me. You're gonna say hundreds! Because when you wrote me that there might be something going on here, I smelled a big story. Now, finish what you started. But it's not true. It's true if you say it's true. Let's try it again. You personally witnessed Patrick Dean supervise the dumping of blah, blah, blah. Take it from there. I personally witnessed Patrick Dean supervised the dumping of hundreds of barrels of toxic chemicals into the Hudson River. <sighs> this could save an innocent man's life. I'm sorry, Mr. Hammer, but this tape does not leave this room. All I have left of Jim is his impeccable reputation. No, he has already been murdered once. God. Patrick Dean was no Boy Scout. And now I knew why he'd been as nervous as my bookie at an IRS audit. I also knew he didn't kill James Phillips or Stephen Daniels. Unfortunately for him, the cops disagreed. Okay, describe these guys again to me. What the hell happened to you? What do you mean? They beat the crap out of me. I thought you were gonna get me out of here. Don't worry, I am. DA will love to see this. You got a Polaroid of him, sausage breath. Listen, wise guy, I can't babysit everybody and lock up. Oh, you can prove this wasn't police brutality, huh? Hey, if we did it, he'd be dead. Yeah, he won't get alone. Come on. Hey, 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 hey. My two favorite men, am I interrupting? Come on, Moretti, we gotta take him downtown for arraignment. Now, wait a minute. Damn, I thought you was gonna help me. You gotta hear me out. I'm listening. I can prove the Dean is set up. What you got? Videotape. Remember the night of Phillips' murder? Mm -hmm. The whole office, it looked like it had been ransacked. It looked like a botched robbery. And I think whoever did it was looking for that videotape. Let's see it. I need time. Time I don't have, Hammer. I got the deputy mayor and the DA breathing down my neck to charge him by 5 o'clock. So they can look good on the 6 o'clock news, huh? They're the politicians, Hammer. I'm just a civil servant. Then do your job, sweetheart. Be a little more civil. Hey, you saw the look on that guy's face. He's not a killer. Do you think you know who the killer is? I don't think. I know. You just got to give me some more time. Four hours. I can lose him in the system for four hours. Now, that's what I call being civil. With any luck, Dean's 15 minutes of TV fame would provide the ticket to Beth's 50 years in prison. Mike, you're late. Why'd you do it, Beth? What are you talking about? I'm talking about double murder. Huh? I saw the videotape. I know you forced Daniels to frame Patrick Dean. I can't prove anything. I don't have to prove a thing. That's the DA's job. What do you think you know? I'll tell you what I know. It all started with Mindy's ring. 
Daniels couldn't afford a rock like that, unless, of course, it was a payoff from a woman married to a job with a secret she wanted to keep. When James Phillips found the videotape, you doctored to expose Patrick Dean. He threatened to expose you and end your career. That's when you had to kill him. Then you killed Stephen Daniels, the only other guy who knew the truth. Well, that's pretty good, Hammer. But, uh, you only got it half right. You see, I didn't kill Daniels. Who did? Lay the hardware on the floor. You know, I meet the most talented men in my line of work. What do you want to do this? Why not here? She'll do anybody anywhere. Tell you this would all work out, huh? You did a good job. You, you, why, why? You took everything I had. You ruined my life. <laughs> you had no life. <laughs> Gotta thank me. I gave you your fifteen minutes of fame. I gotta break your neck. Hey, hey, hey take it easy. Hey, hey, hey. He's got a gun. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh. Watch your crossfire. I got come a on, shot. On, I got on. a kill shot. No, 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 no. Drop that weapon. Put the gun down, Mr. All Dean. Right. Mr. Dean, on, drop relax. the weapon. Do what the lady says, Patrick. Do it now. Somebody do something. Shoot him. Kill him before he shoots me. Don't do this. Don't be stupid. I'll get everything back that you lost. You got a handful of aces here. Juries love handing out network dues money. Patrick. Think about it. You're a free man. You shoot her, she wins. She becomes the victim. A room full of cops as witnesses and take Johnny Cochran to get you out. You go back in, you stay in. Come on, Patrick. Look at these guns. What are you going to do, huh? Come on, you're a smart guy. Now put the piece down. You want to live. You don't want to die. Lieutenant Jackson, unless you want to start something nuclear, call your men off. Drop the gun or drop dead. Your choice. Everybody, put your weapons down. Everybody, slowly lower your guns. You see, Mr. Dean? Nobody's gonna hurt you, all right? We're all gonna lower our guns, and then you can take down yours. No! No! Kill him before he kills me! Patrick, Patrick, come on. Don't do it, Patrick. Come on, Patrick, it's your turn. Put the piece down. Come on, Patrick. Now I gotta go back in there and start all over again. I'll have him out in no time. But when am I gonna get a high paying client out of you, Hammer? Well, Frankie, this is your lucky day. Just so happens I know a beautiful rich bitch who needs a good lawyer. To make things short and to the point, you were set up. That's exactly right. We owe you an apology, Mr. Dean. On behalf of the network, we admit to our wrongdoing and we 
wholeheartedly apologize for any pain we may have caused you and those close to you. Your apology is accepted. And the three million dollars I'm gonna get you. <laughs> I told you I'd get your rich claim. Yeah. Okay, Hammer, why'd you ask me here? So I could watch you gloat. Maybe hear a little I told you so. No, Jackson, as a matter of fact, I wanted to thank you for the four hours you gave me to solve this case. Hmm. And what's this? This is the bird on a roof CD, which may make your next date the best four hours of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know I can't accept gifts, Hammer. No. Mm -hmm. ah, on the other hand, thanks. Congratulations, Mike. Great job. I knew you'd do it, Mike. I'm buying this round. Huh? What'd you do, sell all my pens? <laughs> Life. A simple four-letter word we sometimes take for granted. But not tonight. Tonight we celebrate. As far as the media is concerned, the only good news is bad news. That's why I prefer the sports page. But the good news for me is tomorrow I'm going to go to the garden and watch the Knicks play. Who knows? They might even win.